Good evening, everyone. Uh, thank you all so much for being here. My name is Mick Bruner. I am the music director here at Holy Cross. Tonight, we have the special privilege of welcoming the Christus Chorus from Concordia St. Paul under the direction of Paul Van Campen. Uh, this is part of their Midwest tour. They'll give a few more details about that, um, but they're going to provide a mini concert for us here this evening. Uh, they are accepting free will donations. We have a basket in the back. If you are making a check, you can make it out to Holy Cross, and we will just write one check to send it to them. That will help offset some of their travel costs as they've been exploring the Midwest this week. So please help me welcome the Christus Chorus. Oh, 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 oh,
Thank you. So we are wrapping up. We're in the final minutes of our 2024 uh, tour through the Midwest. We started last, when did we leave? Friday. Thank you. We started last Friday and we went down to Winona, Minnesota. We did a combined concert with the Hope Lutheran High School Choirs conducted by Thomas Johnson. And we gave a concert at St. Martin's Lutheran Church. Then we went to Iowa. We were in the St. Louis area. Kansas City, last night was Lincoln, and now we are here. And at all those different spots, uh, we gave uh, basically the full rundown of our concert. Um, and the choir has, has grown by leaps and bounds. It's been amazing to watch them bond and talk with one another uh, to get them out of the daily grind of classes and give them a completely different daily grind to get through as we travel together and uh, eat lots of wonderful fast food and give concerts almost every night. That first song was the morning trumpet, and you can see it in the programs if you uh, got some of those that we passed out. That uh, comes from the history of shape note singing, which was some of the earliest singing found uh, in America. And so America lagged behind with music for a while because we were a little busy at the start of our existence with uh, winning wars and, and whatnot. So while Mozart and Beethoven, all of them were, were doing good things in Europe, we were trying to become a country. So we lagged behind for a while. And the earliest music in America comes from a tradition where music teachers would go around and use songs like the melody we just sang to teach music uh, in schools. And they were traveling music teachers. And so that's a, a concert arrangement of a shape note tune that was originally found in the Sacred Harp. The next piece we're going to sing is uh, completely different. This is the first two movements of a mass. This is in the first half of the concert program. It's called the Misa Pastoral. Uh, and if you read the program notes, you'll realize it is not Lent, but it is Christmas themed. This is Mass for Christmas Eve. And it was written by um, Jose Maurizio Nunez Garcia, who remains to this day one of the first African-American composers for whom we have complete works. And so a lot of his music was largely unheard of until roughly the last 10 or 20 years. Um, so this setting of the mass is uh, one that the choir has really enjoyed. We hope you enjoy it too. And we'll travel back in time a couple months to Christmas Eve. Please, 
listed as, I think, the second to last song on your program. This is a uh, song, Tico Onatondo. This is a song, uh, it's a hymn that the arranger, um, his, his name's in the program, escapes me at the moment, but he went and found this melody uh, in South Africa, and it is in a language that is spoken by quite a few, quite a few people in that country, and this language is unique because it has three distinct tongue clicks in the language and when you hear a native speaker speak uh it just flows out of them like the most natural thing in the world and it, it, it almost seems like a magic trick it is so cool and i was fortunate enough to be at um, a conference for choral directors where there was a presentation on speaking these south african languages and the presenter from south africa specifically covered uh the language in which this piece is in and i got to come back to the choir and say I know I told you how to do it before I went to this conference, but now I really know how to do it. And so we went and, and we learned it and then they've done an excellent job. And I was making a little joke earlier in tour about how the audience will have to trust me that of the three different tongue clicks, we're doing the second one really, really well. Um, but in Winona, a couple came up to us after the concert, our very first concert, literally from South Africa. And they came up to us and said, we had to tell you your the language you were excellent, excellent. And so I went, woo, all right. I lost, I lost a good joke because we had confirmation that we actually were doing it correctly. And the students have really enjoyed this song. You have the translation in your program. I encourage you to look at it. It is a uh, hymn of praise to God. It is um, evangelism. It is leading the congregation almost in a call and response fashion. And uh, the choir has had a blast singing this one. It features three soloists, Danny, Gabe, and Sega, and Noah on the djembe. So we hope you enjoy the South African hymn. Oh, my God. 
are going to insert a special selection, one of the optional pieces up at CSP. Uh, we have sung In Solar, Jesus Quickly Come, uh, since it was written by Paul Mons when he was a professor at CSP. And this is a song that is very near and dear to our hearts, as well as the hearts of countless other, uh, yes, colleges, but also churches and, and other universities. Um, there is, we need to make an edit to the Wikipedia page about this song because it currently does not mention CSP once. Uh, and it claims that this is the signature song of, I forget what it says exactly. It's like Cambridge over in the UK or something. Yeah, it says King's College. This is their signature song. And I read that a couple months ago and going, I said, come on, that's not right. It can be theirs, that's fine. They're allowed to say that it's theirs, but it should mention us like once, I think. So um, when we were in Lincoln last night, my, uh, my dad does teach at Concordia in Nebraska and he directs the choirs there, has for a long time. And when he showed up in 1998, he chose Inso as another signature song for Seward. They already had another one and he added one on. And so um, there's been a, some playful banter since I got this job about whose song it really is. And last night we invited up um, about, I think about one third of his choir was there uh, and they came up and sang it with us last night. And so we joke and we make uh, a little bit light of the situation, but this is one of the most um, famous and powerful anthems of the church. And we are honored every time we get to sing it and uh, we'll, do it for you this evening as well. So this is In Soul or Jesus Quickly Come.
We're going to close with the final spiritual on our concert program. It's a concert arrangement of Soon I Will Be Done uh, by William Dawson. And the note on this one in the program is extra lengthy on purpose because um, what William Dawson did for the American spiritual, moving it from um, sort of the colloquial shared song that was passed down uh, by oral tradition and moving it into the concert stage has resounded for almost a hundred years now in choral music and the impact on singers and composers and arrangers is um, it's unfathomably huge. And my favorite thing that uh, in researching this tune that I found was uh, something we actually talked about in one of our classes a couple of years ago at the University of Nebraska, which is Dawson's arrangements became so ubiquitous, so like um, just across the board, universally known that other arrangers would set out to make their own version of something like Suna will be done. And they would have Dawson's melody in their head, thinking that that was the original that had been found years ago. Uh, but Dawson had changed a couple things. And so it was, his melodies were so famous that people would accidentally commit copyright infringement because they would use his melody and then his trust and his people would have to say, actually, that's his, not the original. You have to make up your own little twist on it. So um, not like a fun anecdote, but it goes to show just how famous his melodies are and that we've accepted them into our um, choral consciousness, as it were. So uh, thank you for sticking around after Lenten service. I know it's a school night for the kids in the audience. I know it's a school night for you. I apologize, but it is. And uh, they're itching, I know, to get home. But this is uh, the final piece we have. And thank you again for staying here and listening to this concert. Thank you.